One of the responsibilities of men here is to protect the tribe. Oh, thank you. It's looking juicy. Who are you protecting this tribe from? They protect the community from upper sides of the mountain here, Mago. They came to their village and they took hundreds of cows from them. That was the main reason for the conflict. And so how do you retaliate? I mean, is it ever the case that people die in these conflicts? Among Africa's 54 countries, one nation stands alone. Welcome to Ethiopia. When it comes to history, Ethiopia has a story to tell. It's the only African country to never have been colonized. Okay, he's got a lot of those. It's a nation that dances to its own beat. We are in the biggest open market in Africa. Holy cow! What's happening? Where time seems to bounce to its own rhythm. This place is wild. I feel like I've just stepped into another planet. A simmering cauldron of cultures with over 90 ethnic groups. Are you ever worried about your house burning down? Because this looks very flammable. And then there's the food. Ethiopian food is some of the most distinct, different, and delicious on the continent. Wow. And here, in Ethiopia's buzzing capital of Addis Ababa, you can find it all. Starting with their iconic injera bread. Wow, it smells sour. <laughs> Any good Ethiopian dish starts with this. Injera bread is sour and stretchy. Scoop it up. And waiting to be wrapped around your next bite. One of the reasons we eat like this is we feed each other. Do you want some egg? <laughs> Skilled hands season stews with berbere, a potent Ethiopian spice blend, marked by its distinct glowing orange hue. These stews are often made without meat, as people here abstain from meat for over half the year. Sometimes people also observe avoiding alcohol during fasting season. <laughs> That's not that fun. But when the time to eat meat comes, no one goes harder than Ethiopia. You can see a whole slab of cow just hanging right here, and the folks here taking big chunks off of it. Consuming piles of beef served raw. You seem like you do that a lot. Addis Ababa is where my journey begins, but I'm on a mission to break out of the capital and delve deep into Ethiopia's Omo Valley, a place that's called home by many of Ethiopia's tribes. Tribes with ancient cooking customs and techniques that go back centuries. So he's the chief of 650 people. Yeah. I'm only the chief of about 18 people. There are the Dorze, a highland tribe who receives clothing, housing, and food, all thanks to one miracle plant. Is that what you do? The false banana tree. When I look at this, I wouldn't think that this could turn into this right here. But when they're not eating plants, they're eating beef. And here, every part of the cow is eaten raw. As I'm looking at it, I still can see some of the food that was in the cow's stomach. Yeah, that's food of them. Of the cow. Of the cow. And now it's our food. Next, there's the Homer tribe. He's gonna jump now. Where men jump over cattle to prove their manhood. So he's cutting off a piece of the brain right here, and he's gonna go for it. And women cake their hair with red clay. Do you own a mirror? I like that. How do you know if your hair looks the way you want it to look? The Dasanach tribe lives near the fertile Omo River. Here, they catch fish. The preparation here is very straightforward. And sometimes, in the dark of night, they hunt for black crocodiles. Right now, it's chaos on the beach. There's about 100 people watching us. Their plan is to go out for the rest of the night and go until they get a crocodile. Is it gonna happen? I guess we'll find out tomorrow morning. The Mercy Tribe stands apart with their unique lip plates, worn by the women for reasons we'll soon discover. How did it change your everyday life? Here, they mill sorghum and boil greens. Look, just follow them. But on special occasions, they solder a cow. And no single portion of protein goes to waste. When you go into a barn full of manure, and usually you would smell it, that experience is happening instead in my mouth. Yes, of course. So when people are like, oh, it tastes like sh Oh, how do you know what sh tastes like? Have you tasted sh Yes. Like their famous Berberay seasoning, Ethiopia is a medley of flavor. They don't do this at Starbucks at all. A mosaic of cultures. How does one learn to barbecue like this? Like, 
Every spice, every ethnic group adds a note to this cultural symphony. Here, I like that we have these kind of uh, hair picks. It's also a land of extremes, of vegans and carnivores, where virtuosos of flavor create magic with spices. It's hard to describe that kind of flavor. But also, where food is eaten in its most pure form. When I was broke, I got to eat sushi once a year, and I loved it. And this is a little bit like raw salmon in texture. A little bit. Ethiopian food and Ethiopian people are nothing like you've ever seen before. And you're gonna see it all in 24 hours. I ate a hearty breakfast and I'm glad I did because I recommend never to drink warm, raw goat's blood on an empty stomach. You never get used to this.